The world of animals. One of the simplest forms of life, the single-celled amoeba continuously changes its shape as it pushes its cytoplasm out around the food that it absorbs into its body. Most amoeba live in water and reproduce by splitting into two separate cells. This is known as fission. Although they are both members of the metazoa group, the blue whale, the largest animal ever, may weigh as much as 130 tons, whereas the minute rotifer varies from 0.1 to 2 millimeters in length. However, despite its size, the rotifier has a very complex multicellular structure. This chart shows the evolution of animals and plants from the first forms of life, which appeared on Earth about 5 billion years ago. All insects, including this big onion fly, are invertebrates and have an external skeleton of chitin plates linked by very flexible muscles. FLIs are found all over the world, from the cold Arctic regions to the humid tropics. FLIs pass through for stages in their development, egg, larva, pupa, and finally the adult fly. The starfish, spider and jellyfish are invertebrates. The vivid red starfish, or sea star, has five radiating arms and a supporting skeleton of calcite plates. The spider is often mistakenly labeled as an insect, but is an arachnid. Its body is divided into two parts and it has four pairs of legs. Many jellyfish are dangerous to man and can cause severe rashes and stings. A mass of long tentacles hangs from the central umbrella like jelly mass. The skeleton of the gorilla, snake and blue whale, like those of other vertebrates, are called endoskeletons because they are formed within the body. Skeletons provide a framework for the moving parts of the body and protect delicate internal organs. The skeletons of most vertebrates are made of bone and cartilage, which partly composed of collagen. The Komodo dragon, a member of the monitor lizard family, is the largest species of lizard. Found on Komodo Island and some other Indonesian islands, the Komodo dragon eats smaller members of the same species and carrion. It sometimes will cannibalize other adults, and has even been known to attack, kill and eat human beings. This somber deer, from southern Asia, is a herbivore. All deer are ruminants and have no cutting teeth or upper jaw incisors. Most bivalve mollusks filter their food from the water in which they live, picking up minutes' food particles with their long proboscides. Like man, the badger is an omnivore and eats a mixture of plants and flesh. A member of the weasel family, the badger lives on fruit, fungi, cereals, and small mammals. In the food chain, the sun's energy is used by plants to make food. The plants are eaten by herbivores which, in turn, are eaten by carnivores. Both plant and animal substances decompose when they die and return mineral substances to the soil, where bacteria use them to provide carbon dioxide gas. Carbon dioxide and the sun's energy then enter the chain again. The conspicuous wasp uses its bright coloring and sting as a means of defense. Its sting is a modified form of ovipositor, which it injects into its victim and then withdraws, thus leaving a mixture of histaminian poisons in the victim. The Australian spiny anteater has long, sharp spines and curls into prickly ball to protect itself from predators. The skunk raises its tail and arches its body in an intimidation display. It can squirt a foul-smelling liquid, which causes skin irritations. The stick insect uses its normal shape and coloring to conceal itself from predators. This is known a cryptic coloration. When disturbed, it stays motionless and resembles a twig. Soldiers like these American disc combing the undergrowth in Vietnam wear special camouflage uniforms to hide from the enemy. A moth can appear to merge into its surroundings because of its disruptive coloration. Its muted, mottled colors seem to break up the shape of its body to an observer. The egret's long legs are well adapted for wading, whereas the wombat can burrow and eat roits with its sharp nails and teeth. The mammoth become extinct because it could not adapt to the ice age conditions. Many birds, animals and fishes migrate seasonally, moving from breeding to feeding places and returning the following year. Birds like the Arctic tern, sometimes fly thousands of miles to avoid the cold winters of the northern hemisphere. Mammals like the caribou, may move between winter and summer quarters in search of food. This dormouse, curled up in a nest of twigs, leaves and grass, is hibernating. Several weeks before the onset of hibernation, it lays in a store of body fats, and when the temperature drops to near freezing, it goes to sleep. Its pulse rate and body temperature drop and it is deadly cold to touch. It appears to be dead and may not be roused from sleep even if handled quite roughly. Frogs hibernate in the mud of ponds, 
river banks and trees. Because they are cold-blooded and react quickly to changes in temperature, they go into hibernation in autumn in cool, temperate regions of the world. During hibernation, they live off the fat stored in their bodies as a food reserve until the spring comes. Like all frogs, the colorful blue mountain tree frog undergoes a complex life cycle. Frogs lay eggs or frog spawn, which absorb heat from the sun and divide until the young tadpole is formed. It continues to grow until it breaks out and changes its form, growing into an adult frog. This picture sequence traces the development of the human embryo. When fertilization takes place, the nuclei of the sperm and the egg fuse and the resulting nucleus divides into two. Each cell divides twice and further divisions produce an inner cell mass from which embryo grows. At six weeks, arms and legs start to grow, and the brain grows considerably at seven weeks. The embryo's limbs are well formed at eight weeks, and four weeks later, it is recognizable as being human. The shape and limbs of this human embryo inside the amnion are clearly visible. The coiled umbilical cord attaches the fetus to the w womb of its mother. The 4,000 species of mammals are divided into three groups, monotremes, marsupials, and placentals. The duck-billed platypus is a monotreme, an egg-laying mammal, whereas the Burmese cat is a placental, which, like man, nourishes the embryo by means of a true internal placenta. Monkeys and apes are primates, but unlike apes, monkeys nearly always have a tail. The orang Udin and gibbon are arboreal and extremely agile apes. The gorilla is the largest ape, whereas the intelligent chimpanzee most resembles man. The bald-headed wakari ya a new world monkey from the rainforest of the river Amazon. It has a short tail and swings by its long arms from branch to branch. The squirrel monkey has a long, coiled, prehensile tail. This family tree demonstrates the diversity of rodents which range in size from the tiny house mouse to the large South American capybara, which resembles a giant guinea pig. The largest order of mammals, rodents are found in every continent except Antarctica. The ungulates are a group of hooved animals that walk on the tips of their toes. They are divided into two groups, artiodactyls, or even-toed ungulates and perissodactyls or odd-toed ungulates. There are only three perissodactyl families, but the artiodactyls, which include cattle, deer, antelopes, and pigs, are a large group of eight families in total. These flying foxes roost in trees during the day, hanging free from the high branches, and fly off in search of food at dusk. Their diet consists of fruit, nectar, and pollen. The bat is well adapted to the requirements of flight. It has a light skeleton with powerful forelimbs and strong shoulder joints. This wallaby with a baby joey in its pouch is a marsupial. When the hairless, blind young animal is born, it bursts out of the fluid-filled amnion and climbs through the mother's fur to the pouch where it attaches itself to teeth. It receives no help from its mother and is probably guided by its sense of smell. The echidna, or spiny anteater, as it is often called, is an egg-laying mammal. The egg is incubated in the female's pouch, and when the newborn animal breaks out of the egg, it attaches itself to the teats in the pouch. This cutaway illustration of a crocodile shows its skeleton and internal organs. Its heart, like that of the alligator and caiman, has two ventricles and two auricles, but the venous and arterial blood are mixed. The crocodilia order first appeared in the Triassic era and the crocodile is a direct descendant of early reptiles. The ancient reptiles, known as dinosaurs, were enormous and included the largest animals that have ever lived. Most dinosaurs became extinct in the Cretaceous era, 70 million years ago, when the Earth's crust was undergoing great upheavals. However, the Tatara, which lives off the coast of New Zealand, is a relic from the Triassic Age of Reptiles. This spiny, soft-shelled turtle is a large reptile that lives in freshwater. Its leathery soft shell lacks horny plates. This family tree shows that reptiles evolved from the early primitive amphibians. The crocodile from Australia is 2.5 meters long with a slender snout and a wide mouth filled with sharp teeth. The tuatara, a relic from Triassic times, is found on 20 islands off the coast of New Zealand. This living fossil has a lizard-like appearance and belongs to the otherwise extinct order of Rhynchocephalia. The monitor is a snake-like lizard with a slender body and forked tongue. The carpet python may lay from 8 minus 100 eggs, about three months after mating. Sicilians Salamanders and newts are all amphibians. The Sicilian belongs to the apoda order of legless and burrowing amphibians, 
whereas newts and salamanders both belong to the caudata order of amphibians with tails. Newts are terrestrial for most of the year and became aquatic in the breeding season. Salamanders may be terrestrial, aquatic, semi-aquatic, or arboreal. The tree frog is characterized by fleshy discs on the ends of its fingers and toes. The female marsupial frog carries its eggs in a pouch on its back. The water-holding frog, Australia can store water in its bladder and so survive long drought periods. This cutaway picture of a bird shows that the bones are fused to provide a rigid fulcrum for the wing action in flight. The skeleton is very light the bones being hollow. The bird's breast muscles are powerful and well-developed to supply motive power when flying, and the body itself is streamlined and has an aerodynamic shape for flying. The penguin is a large flightless bird, which lives on the icy shores of Antarctica. The small wings are used as flippers when swimming underwater. Although the wing bones are short and flat, they are similar in structure to those of a flying bird. The large emu is a flightless Australian bird. Its tiny wings are only one-tenth of its body length. During the dry seasons, it migrates over long distances in search of water. Most birds build nests in which they incubate their eggs and rear their young. This nest contains a young seagull chick. This flight sequence shows the flapping motion of a duck. When the wings flap, the tips move faster than the rest of the wings, providing the thrust for sustained flight. The bird's streamlined shape and lightweight skeleton are perfectly adapted for flight. This cross-section through a fish shows the skeleton and internal organs. Although there are many variations in body shape and the position and number of fins, the basic structure is similar to that of vertebrates. Most of the body is muscular tissue and the skeleton protects the fish's vital organs. The jaws of this Australian lungfish, Neoceratidus forsteri, have large nostrils and bony tooth plates. This primitive fish, which dates back to the Devonian and Triassic periods, is found only in a few rivers in northern Queensland. It has one lung and large bony scales. Coelacanths were long believed extinct, but since 1938 about 40 have been discovered off the coast of Madagascar. They appeared 400 million years ago in the Devonian period. They have extremely small brains and a hinged bony skull. The stingray has a flat body and large wing-like pectoral fins. At the base of its tail is a sharp spine, or sting, which it uses as a means of defense to inflict a painful wound. Its speckled body camouflages it well against the pebbles on the seafloor. The large pectoral fins of flying fishes are specially adapted for gliding above water and can spread like wings. Flying fishes may reach speeds of up to 56 kph, and it is thought that they make use of the updrafts of air in the troughs of waves. Sharks are among the most feared marine animals. Although many are harmless to man, the aggressive hammerhead and mako sharks will make unprovoked attacks on boats. Electric eels are only very distantly related to true eels and can produce an electric discharge. The lines of force produced resemble those of an ordinary bar magnet. Like most arthropods, insects have a segmented body and external skeleton. The view of a typical insect and the cutaway drawing show the few segments that form its head, thorax and abdomen. This insect family tree shows their division into three basic groups. Group A includes the primitive, wingless insects that do not undergo a process of metamorphosis. Group B contains those insects with incomplete or gradual metamorphosis. The insects in group C undergo complete metamorphosis. The butterfly undergoes a full metamorphosis in its development from egg to fully grown adult. The caterpillar, which hatches from the egg, spins a cocoon in which it becomes a pupa. The adult emerges from the hard cast pupa when fully grown. The trapdoor spider spins a silk lined shaft and a hinged door at the entrance to its burrow. The funnel web spider builds a silken, tubular funnel. This elephant is protected from indiscriminate hunters and poachers in the Kruger National Park, South Africa. Game reserves and national parks play an important role in the conservation of threatened species. They protect wildlife from man and preserve the natural environment of the animals. This woman is spinning wool by means of a traditional spinning wheel. Sheep's wool is an important animal product which is used for clothing, blankets, floor coverings, soft furnishings and rugs. Veterinary doctors have to treat a wide range of animals, including household pets, zoo and farm animals. The vets are performing an emergency operation on a horse in a special surgical unit. However, most vets have to work on the job like the vet who is operating on a cow in the outbuildings of a farm. 
The little dog has had its broken leg set in plaster at a special hospital for dogs. Hey!